Hey guys, it's Chris with Highline Guitars. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to address a couple of questions which came up in recent videos where I talk specifically about carving necks and bodies with my new X-Carve Pro CNC machine. And these are questions that I thought might uh, make for an interesting video and will explain some things that I'm sure some of you have been thinking about but maybe haven't necessarily commented about or asked questions about. The first is with respect to a guitar neck, one of the questions that came up was why don't I use my X-Carve Pro CNC machine to drill the tuner holes? Well, as you can see, this headstock is angled. It's about a 10 degree angle. And with a CNC machine, if the, the neck is just sitting there on the, the, the wasteboard, obviously those holes have to be uh, drilled perpendicular to the surface. So if the surface is 10 degrees, then those holes have to match that angle as I drill it into the, to the surface of the wood. And a CNC machine, the bit is straight up and down. And that's because this is just a three axis CNC machine. If I had like a five axis CNC machine, then the whole assembly could be tilted and it would do so in the, you know, the G code would tell, to, tell it to tilt as it would prepare to drill those holes. Well, <laughs> price out a five axis CNC machine and you'll see that that's not really something that's realistic for pretty much any small shop luthier. So what I would have to do in order to drill the holes with an angled headstock is I'd have to make a fixture, which I would then install the neck into so that the headstock would be flat and then I could drill those holes. I could do that, it wouldn't take that much to do it. I just haven't really taken the time to do it. And right now, it doesn't take much work once the neck is carved just to uh, walk it over to my drill press and then drill those holes. It's not that big a deal. And that's currently the way I'm doing it. Uh, in the future, I may build a simple fixture that I can just stick this into, install it, and I'm good to go. I can just uh, set up the uh, machine's uh, start position and then always just drill those holes and it wouldn't be that much uh, trouble to do that and who knows maybe I will do that down the road but I'm also looking at for 2022 uh, I'm designing uh, some new guitars and one of them and, and maybe several of them are going to make use of a flat headstock similar to what you would see like on a uh, Fender Telecaster or Stratocaster so I wouldn't need the fixture to do that I could just simply drill the holes as I'm carving the neck so um, that's just something that I'm, I may do down the road. Now, another question that came up was, in the past I've talked about using scarf joints when I do an angled headstock. And in the video that where I carved this neck in real time on the CNC machine, and I'll put a link to that video up here, I carved it out of a block of wood. And some folks have wondered, you know, is that really just a big waste of wood? You know, it seems like there's a lot of wood that's being carved away. Plus, uh, why would I not use the scarf joint? You know, am I suddenly against using scarf joints? And it's really funny how people zero in on that kind of stuff. The reason I used scarf joints in the past is because it allowed me to use thinner stocks of material. So I could purchase boards that were anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. And that stuff is plentiful from my lumber supplier and it's cheap. So I could buy that wood, I could cut the angle, glue the, uh, the scarf joint, and I was ready to go. But with CNC, it's possible just to carve the whole neck out of a single thick slab of wood. And I was able to start sourcing wood from my supplier that was eight quarters or roughly two inches thick. And with a 10 degree angled headstock, it all fit within that thickness of wood. So that was really not that big of an issue in terms of carving out a, a neck with an angled headstock out of a full thickness of wood. 
However, a lot of you out there don't necessarily have access to wood that thick. You've got access to wood that's much thinner. In that case, a scarf joint is warranted, and I would still recommend doing it. Now, this is also going to bring up the question of, well, aren't scarf joint headstocks stronger than a, a headstock that's carved out of a full thickness of wood? Because remember, the grain is short grained across its thickness. In some cases, yes. Uh, with respect to like mahogany, you have to be really careful about the wood you choose if you're going to use, you know, if you're going to carve your entire neck and headstock out of a single thick slab and, and you're not going to use a scarf joint because mahogany is a, is a little, uh, it's not quite as strong as, say, maple. With maple, you don't have to worry about short graining. It's not going to really cause an issue. You rarely see headstocks breaking or cracking on maple headstocks. They're just that strong and that durable, so it's not that big of a concern. But with mahogany, it can be, and we've seen plenty of headstocks that crack right across the surface. So you have to be really careful about choosing the wood that you're going to use for a neck when it comes to using mahogany. Uh, I always recommend quarter sawn mahogany. If you go with anything, you know, riff sawn or flat sawn, you're going to really run the risk of a headstock that's just not going to be strong enough to support, um, you know, the string tension and withstand, you know, the occasional bump that could cause it to snap. It also a lot depends on the design of the headstock, its shape, and how much material there is between tuning holes and things like that. But if you go with a quarter saw mahogany, you're going to have much greater success when it comes to the strength of your headstock, and then you can carve it out of a single thick slab of wood. Now that also brings up the question about wood waste. And I've had several people over the, the years comment that when they see me carving a neck out of a big thick slab of wood, that there's a lot of wood that's going to waste. That's not the case. Uh, none of the wood that I carve from gets wasted. Even all the chips and dust that get generated gets recycled. And all the scraps that are cut are used in other pro uh, projects that I do. I never waste any wood. Uh, in fact, a lot of times when I'm making um, like uh, necks out of uh, maple, the scrap wood that is left over gets made into my big giant 30 inch long radius sanding blocks. So, you know, that's never really an issue. And it's also important to remember that wood is a sustainable resource. Of course, it depends on who you're buying the wood from. But I always buy my uh, lumber from suppliers who can prove that the wood has been sustainably sourced, meaning most of it comes from plantations. And that's true with the mahogany, the maple, the ash, all the different kinds of wood that I use, alder, uh, even some of the uh, rosewoods or uh, rosewood alternatives that I'm using for fretboards are coming from plantations. So uh, in some cases, for every tree that gets cut down, five new trees get planted and eventually those will grow and be harvested for future use. And so wood is a sustainable resource as long as it's not being abused. I just saw a, a, a stat this morning on Twitter. I don't know how true this is, but <laughs> somebody had posted that it takes every single day, 27,000 trees are cut down to make toilet paper. <laughs> so I don't feel so bad about the wood that I use for my guitar necks. Anyway, that's really what I had to, to talk about today. In a future video, in fact, it's probably the next one that I'll be posting, I'm gonna be talking about some of the cam strategies that I'm using. There are some things that I learned since I upgraded to the X-Carve Pro that have had a dramatic impact on the speed and the quality of finish that I'm now able to achieve uh, using CNC technology. So, um, You'll want to check out that video once I post it, probably in about a week or so. Uh, at any rate, uh, as always, 
give my video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you like videos on building guitars. And if you want to show my channel some support, head over to eGuitar Plans, purchase a plan for a guitar or one of the different tools that I use. I still have my plan for uh, building the CNC machine that I used to use before I upgraded to the X-Carve. And while that machine doesn't have quite the capabilities that the X-Carve Pro has, it's still a really good machine for building guitars and you know you might want to check that out if you want to build a CNC machine as a project and save some money at the same time. Plus when you purchase the manual you're helping to support my channel and if you don't want to purchase a plan but still would like to you know give me a little bit of a bump uh, I've got a merch shelf down below hopefully you can see it where I sell some of the t-shirts that you see me wearing in the videos. Uh, you can purchase one of those and wear it proudly and show your support for Highline Guitars. At any rate, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.